Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing more of the Entrenched Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which whenever we play a unit, it'll get resilience. And today we are playing one of the craziest, most powerful, and most entertaining decks I've ever made. So let's go give it a look. So today we'll be playing a Monsters Force of Nature deck that is built entirely around the new Sir Scratchalot card, because... As you guys may already know, this is a very powerful card. Not only when we play it, does it allow our Thrive cards to get boosted from units that our opponents play, but also every turn we can use its order ability to boost its power by two and replay it. Means we're losing the immunity on Scratch a lot, but we'll be fine with that. Now, the goal of this deck is to create a bazillion copies of Scratch a lot because he is one of the strongest cards in this event in particular since when we replay him, he will automatically regain resilience. So that means we can play a bunch of them in round one and then get the resilience on those. Then we can continue to power up the boost in round two, because every time we do that, we'll get that boost to get two points stronger. And then we'll have resilience on the scratch lots in round two as well. So they're carrying over into round three if the match even goes that long. And that means by that point, they are incredibly powerful because who knows how many points those orders are going to be worth at that point. So that's the big idea is create as many scratch lots as possible. And since he has a ton of of ability to regain resilience even if he gets purified then that is just amazing to have that ability in this event and in some ways because of that order ability getting stronger over time he does have carryover value of sorts beyond just the resilience so in terms of how we create additional copies of him we have a few ways to do so let's start off with Karen Fear create a one power copy of a card in our hand so we have scratch lot in our hand we use Karen Fear create additional copy of scratch lot not to mention the one power version of Scratch Lot. As soon as we use the order ability, no problem. Back at full power. In addition to that, we can also use Sienna to get an additional trigger of Karen Thier's order ability to create two additional Scratch Lots. So, other than that, we have Weavis, who will trigger Deathwish whenever we play a Deathwish card, and so it basically means one extra round of Deathwish triggering. So we play Weavis, then we consume a Scratch Lot with a Raucous Queen, so Weavis will give us one additional Scratch Lot, and then we consume the Raucous Queen with Weavis, and that's two additional Scratch Lots, but... Before we consume the Arrakis Queen, we use Avaya to trigger an additional round of Death Wish on the Arrakis Queen for one more of the scratch -a -lots. And not only that, but if we have Iteran on the board when we're doing all of that scratch -a lot spawning, then we get an additional scratch -a lot every time we do so. And so that adds up to somewhere on the order of about eight or nine scratch lots if everything is set up perfectly. Obviously, you're very rarely going to get all that stuff to work in one match, but just getting some of it to get multiple scratch lots is amazing. And in this case, even if the scratch lots get doomed, when you use the order ability to replay a scratch lot, it loses the doom, so totally fine. And normally, when you spawn in units, they will not get resilience in this event. But once again, use the order ability on Scratch a lot, you replay him, then he gets resilience, so it doesn't matter. So, tons and tons of Scratch a lots, which gives us points just from his order ability increasing the power of the boost. We do have some Thrive, which is generally the thing that you're supposed to use to build around Scratch a lot, although Scratch a lot himself should be very effective here. So, we can do things like play a Dragon Larva or two, which gives us two Thrive units on the board. We can play. A Fuka, which gets boosted by two when it's Thrive triggers, so that's also a great option. And we can also get a little bit smaller on the Thrive with Curse Damsel, or use the Orchard Man Trap likely in the range row to give Thrive to two additional units, because we already have plenty of Thrive triggering with our Sir Scratch a lot, so the consumption here on Man Trap probably not as significant. But the biggest Thrive unit that we have is actually the Kashe, because every time the Thrive triggers on the Kashe, it will spawn in an Indriga Larva, which is, of course, as we just saw, another Thrive unit. So that means if you have a ton of your Scratch Lots in, let's say, the melee row, and you have the Kashe by itself in the range row, even in a short round, you just spam the order abilities on all those Scratch Lots, and you are going to almost immediately fill that row that the Kashe is in with additional Andrea Larva, so that means tons and tons of Thrive triggers there. And even if you run out of board space, you can still continue to use the Scratch Lots, and they'll continue to build up power. You may not be able to spawn in more Andrea Larva, but you're still going to trigger all the Thrives on those Andrea Larva, so it's going to be crazy how many points you can put up there. So that's that aspect. Scratch a lot and thrive to get boosted when we use Scratch a lot. 
However, the other thing that we can do to mess with our opponents is because we're replaying Scratch a lot so often, and he is our key card, and every time we replay him, he regains resilience, what that means is that we can purify potentially everything on the board, even our own cards, and just replace Scratch a lot after you do that, and he regains resilience. So you remove the resilience of all your opponent's cards with that purification, and you almost immediately regain the resilience with your cards, just as long as you give yourself enough time to still use the Scratch Lot order abilities after you do the purification. And why do I say purify everything? Because I quite literally mean purify everything with Siegfried. So what you do is, once you've done all of your Scratch Lots, made as many of them as possible, gotten some Thrive units on the board to get boosted from the Scratch Lots, then on your last turn, you play Siegfried, purify every single unit, including your opponent's units, so they get no carryover going into rounds two or round three. And then after you play Siegfried, you replay all of your Scratch Lots with the order abilities, they regain their resilience, and suddenly you have tons of carryover, and they have none. So that's the big idea for your finishers. And outside of Siegfried, we have other smaller purification options like Spring Equinox, which doesn't give us any points, but purifies all units in a row. And assuming you have enough points from the Scratch a Lots and Thrive, then you can probably just go all in the purification here and not worry too much about the lack of points. And then other than that, we have Peller and we have Dare I say, even the Nagelfair's Taskmaster, because a little bit of points, we get the resilience on our card and we can purify some of our opponent's cards as well. So, uh, crazy point potential on our side, both from the Scratch Lots and from the Thrive cards, and then might as well purify your opponents and get rid of their carryover because we can bounce back from that with all of our Scratch Lots. So that's the idea for the deck, and it is totally crazy. It is a ton of fun to play. Yes, chances are you're not going to get the perfect setup for the maximum number of scratch lots, but two, three, four certainly is going to be more than enough. So let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against monsters here, and we'll go first. Okay, and we do not have scratch lot in hand. However, we have things like... Triss Butterflies and Nagel Fair that can help us get Scratch a lot. So that's not bad. We'd perhaps like a little bit of purification here, and we have a little bit mixed between the Spring Equinox and the Nagel Fair Taskmaster Master, but perhaps we can do a little bit better than this. Certainly with Heraka's Queen we can. And I like the Thrive, yes, but these two are better for Thrive. Gosh, eh? way better for Thrive than you are. And so is this. So I I think we settle for this because it can't get too much better. There are some additional cards that can help us uh, create additional scratch -a lots, but we also have Curse Scroll. Obviously, we need to get scratch -a lot in hand. So, uh, to start things off with, we should probably Chris Butterflies use that to get scratch -a lot, and we will replace possibly even one of our Thrive cards here. So we use you and put back, technically you're slightly better than the man trap is. Guess we'll put back the man trap and replace you with scratch a lot. So that's key. Then we can use this curse scroll to get additional setup cards like Karen Theer is probably the most obvious choice since we have Sienna. So that's a nice way to double down on the scratch lots. And so I'm thinking that we could go Iteran is another way to potentially create additional copies. So all of those could work. We obviously have Nagel Fair, which could potentially give us even more of those types of options. And in fact, technically speaking, I'll tell you what. Given how many golds we have access to here, I think we actually use this to get Iteran first, because we have so much capability to create additional copies of things. Debating between these two. We might end up getting rid of both of them. Ah, uh, no, we can only get rid of one more here anyway. We'll dump the Fuga, I guess, and then play you. So, because we can potentially spawn in additional scratch lots from a whole host of things. Yeah, I saw all the high base power cards, and that's in large part why I decided to side with Spring Equinox here. So, we have so many ways to spawn additional copies of 
uh, card of specifically scratch lots that it felt like, you know, Iteran might have been the way to go here. And now we should go make sure we get our order of operations correct here. Weavis. Then Siana. Order here doesn't matter much, but Siana will be to set up the... What will hopefully be... Karen Thier, out of Nagelfair. That's the, the risk we're taking, or that's the, the bet we're making there. Okay, Bloody Mistress. I don't love it in this event. If I remember correctly, she loses the resilience when she transforms, which is uh, obviously a huge downside to that. So let us now see Anna. And next turn is Siana plus Nagelfair, and we're hoping that we... Oh, well, 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 well. We may not have caught you yet, but we are looking to do some big things here. So we're really looking for Karen Thier. And we got him. Now, Avaya wouldn't have been bad either, but that would have required that we'd already gotten Arrakis Queen out here. So that's the one card that we haven't really gotten the chance to, uh, to set up. So it's additional scratch lots here. And even more additional scratch lots here. Then it's, and we should absolutely go through with our full combo here. Doesn't matter how many cards we go down. It might seem like overkill. It might seem like we're going cards down. But in doing so, it means that we get uh, more scratch lots and we can get resilience on those anyway. So that's no big deal. So now we go, we should not consume you yet because you have doomed. So we should, at the very least, do this on our scratch lots. No more doomed. So now you can be consumed, which we will proceed to do. That means one more scratch lot. This one also has doomed, which means we need to play this one. Yes, I know it's going to say we're overcommitting, but we aren't because we're going to get resilience from all these guys. And this, and also the more times we do this, obviously the more boosted our scratch lots will be in subsequent rounds. And if we had a Baya, this would be the time to use it to trigger the uh, Death Wish on Arrakis Queen, but we don't. As we were saying, that's the one card that we don't have access to. So we should instead just, uh, well, I mean, we can do this. If we really want to, it's going to take up some space, but so be it. Also, we definitely didn't want to do that before Iteran because that meant we lost one. Scratch a lot there. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, we we had plenty of scratch lots, and we'll play another scratch a lot. Well, yeah, we'll still play another scratch a lot here. But we, we missed out on a scratch a lot. So it could have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scratch lots. We'll have to settle for six. I suppose we'll have to settle for six. Yes, I know you think we're overcommitting. Because it looks like we are. But because these scratch a lots have resilience. It's really no big deal. And we'll finish this round by going with probably this Ring Equinox and we'll just use it here to get rid of the resilience because that's where you have the most points. So there we go. A uh, whole lot of stuff going on in round one. But uh, most importantly, we set up a bazillion scratch lots. So now we draw into a buy it. Well, technically, we were guaranteed to get it right from Karen, from uh, rather Nagel Fair. So I suppose that's not too much of a surprise. We don't have anything to trigger the Death Wish on anymore. It is a Thrive card, so it's not a terrible selection, but we probably still like to. Uh, I think we'll go Purification with Siegfried as our finisher here. And well, that does mean I suppose we should have stuck with a buy it because we were likely to get into other Purification cards. Uh, but what we'd like to do here is Kashe. And with Kashe. We are going to fill this row pretty much immediately with the Andrega Larvae. So you do this. And we should start with our smaller scratch lots, ideally. The ones that have smaller boosts here. Unfortunately, those happen to be the ones in the melee row because we'd like to move these out of the range row and into the melee row so we have more room for these larvae. But uh, suppose we'll at least start with you. 
And in doing so, we get the resilience back. Oh, and also we still have Itaran, so that means even more larvae. So then let's do this one. Get more larvae. Then we'll move you here. Get even more, and we'll just replay you guys in this row. So we still have room in the melee row. I would like to make sure that we can still play you. Ideally, 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 we did not. <laughs> it takes a little bit of time if you're talking through all that stuff, but uh, alas, in one turn, we got, uh, you know, over 100 points. We had some points carrying over, of course, but. The issue, of course, the issue is that we're going to run out of space with this Kashi. So uh, we can still get all the carryover from the scratch a lot, so we can do this in round three as well. So this will basically turn into a, a tempo pass. Um, if we care, or rather, if we seek freed, we're going to get rid of the uh, resilience on Kashi, which would rather not do. Maybe we just do a targeted purification with the Taskmaster on you. Gets rid of your Thrive anyway, so just significantly weakens you. Gets rid of the Resilience. That doesn't have Resilience anymore anyway. So I think we do this. I think we do this. And that'll be our last play in this round. And, however, still have a lot more points to score here. Technically, still do the little ones first. Because, yeah, we missed out on a Thrive trigger there. But, six, eight. Oh, man. Oh, man. Make sure we get you. Make sure we get you. It takes so much time <laughs> to trigger <laughs> all the Thrives. Um, we didn't get to use you, unfortunately. But, uh, we made. I prioritized making sure that we at least had the resilience on all the scratch -a lots So, they will carry over to the next round, as will Kashi. So, I mean, we could continue to play and just discard whatever card we have here, but I'm thinking I like this setup because we'll have Kashi, even if they can catch us and they have a lot of cards to do so, um, the thing we actually are most concerned about would be purification, because we, if we do pass, can no longer continue to play our scratch a lots. but uh, even if they do catch us, we will still have Kashi carrying over and all the scratch a lots that'll, as we just saw, be capable of filling a row very quickly with more Thrive cards, and even if the rows are full, we can just replay Scratch Lots in the same spot over and over again. And as we saw, that that generates, uh, you know, at least 50 points per turn, if not more, when you actually have time to play all of your cards. So, we'll leave it at this for now. We didn't even have room for our leader ability either. Scratch Lots are bigger. It doesn't matter, man. So, Purification is the thing we care about. We're fine with them catching us. Just don't really want them to purify the scratch lots at this point in time. In the middle of a round, it's fine because we can replay the scratch lots and get the uh, resilience back. But now that we've passed, that's no longer an option. So it seems like they're just going to be prioritizing, of course, trying to outscore us, which is understandable because they may not be able to do so. Lots of relics. And a beast. That's definitely going to continue to get boosted for a while. Is it going to be enough, though? They only have three cards left here, and we still have an 80-point lead. Necker Warrior, that's not going to do you much good here. Leader ability, sure, you can trigger the Thrive, but... Also, <laughs> totally forgot about the, the other part, where Sir scratch -a lot allows them to trigger our Thrives, which they did a tiny bit there. And they will continue to do a tiny bit here as well. Makes it a little bit harder for them to catch us, but they have one card left here. It's a spear tip. It's a good finisher. But it triggers our Thrives as well. So we hold on for the 2-0 win with three cards to spare. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And we'll go first. Okay, and we have Scratch Lot in our starting hand. We have... Triss, which we can use to get some other stuff here, but don't have a... Uh, I suppose we have Royal Decree as well, so we can do a little bit of setup there. Abaya requires that we get a Raucous Queen in order to make that work, and Siana could use that to double down on Abaya, so that means we'd want to use Triss Butterflies or Royal Decree to get a Raucous Queen, and outside of that, we do have a fair bit of Purification here. Maybe we don't need you... There is a Rockus Queen. Okay, that's a big pickup in that case. Uh, well, this might not be a bad mix in that case. We'll, we'll stick with this, I suppose. And we still have Curse Scroll. 
So that means that we can fine tune our hand even further if we need to. So to start things off with, of course, they are Nilf cards, so they very well may have some control. And even if we have a good hand for maximizing our scratch a lot quantity, they probably are going to slow down some of that stuff. So technically speaking, the best first turn play for us would probably be Iteran to maximize the additional quantity of scratch lots we get. So let's go Triss first. And use her to get it ran, and that means we're gonna have to dump some of our other cards here. I think we will. Let's keep Equinox because this might be our last play. Let's get rid of the Man Trap. It means obviously a little less thrive, but we'll get rid of or we'll add it ran, and we will need to we'll probably realistically end up getting rid of uh, possibly all of our thrive in this round to maximize how much scratch a lot spawning we get. But we shall see. Okay, Hoakim. Sure. Into Lightmaker for thinning. Generally a point slam and they'll probably cool draw on Hoakim. Usually you don't start with that though. That's a little bit weird. Okay, so we are also going to need a lot of space. So if they start flooding us with more spies, that's going to start to become a bit of an issue. But let's go Iteran now, I think. And he might get answered in some way, shape, or form. But if he does, then of course we still have many other ways to create additional copies of Scratch a lot. So, Iteran is a nice to have, not a need to have. Okay, it's Artorius Vigo. So it's looking more like a, well, a simulate deck, yes. Mage Infiltrator. They deliberately do not trigger the death blow which they could have played it right here and gotten more damage, destroyed Hoakim. Maybe it's because they're planning on using Coup de Gras, but that would suggest they are deliberately trying to flood us with bad cards to take up valuable row space, and we need all the space we can get because we are looking to make a whole lot of scratch lots starting now. And in fact, between Royal Decree and our stratagem, we could get both Weavis and... Karen Theor here, so we actually can get the, the grand total quantity. So that would mean, why don't we Royal Decree here and use that to go Karen Theor. Now, Karen Theor is potentially a card you could set up with Siana. We can do that with a, a Baya on a Rockus Queen as well, and so that's kind of... The direction that I'm expecting for us to go in here, because obviously we just played Karen Theory before we got Siana down there. But this is what I mean. This is going to take up room. Okay, but they're just going to play Mage Assassin from hand and destroy one. You should not have destroyed the one that did not have Doomed, because you could have gotten rid of this one permanently. I mean, I guess either way you're going to destroy one permanently, but we can get rid of the Doomed when we replay this. So uh, that's, that's not a problem. So now, just order of operations wise, it's going to be... Siana and uh, uh, Weavis are the two next things. Technically, doesn't matter what order we're going to play them in unless we think one of them is going to get answered. Eh? Let's... Siana's maybe a little bit greedier. Let's play her first, so if she gets answered, it's not as much of a, de a big deal. We really do need uh, to get Weavis to work, so... Yeah, let's let's go for Siana here. We'll use Scratch a lot. As I was saying, gets rid of the Doomed on him, and obviously we get resilience then, we get the boost as well. Okay, Brothens, more spies, so yeah. As we anticipated. And once again go in Mage Infiltrator and once again deliberately not triggering Death Blow. So that that is becoming a factor. Unfortunately, we would love if we could sneak in a secret, which technically we could still do, but if we were planning on doing that, we should have committed to it earlier because we'd have to use him with Curse Scroll. And since we uh, went for Karen Theor, basically it was going to be Karen Theor or, or Siegfried. Um, yeah. Because now we, we need to get the Weavis out here, otherwise, Abaya has nothing to do, and Arrakis Queen doesn't really have much to do either. So. It's Curse Scroll now to get Weavis, 
and we'll dump probably and drink a larva. Is it going to be either of you? Because you just take up more room. So we use you. Do not yet use the consumption. We should, of course, do this. And we're waiting on Sienna for our next turn, where we will... Actually, two turns. Technically, two turns from now. So here's the thing. They're still in the lead. We don't care. We don't care how many cards we go down. We're going to continue to create copies of Scratch a lot. We now, in fact, we kind of like this because that means they are not going to interrupt our combo any further, which they are doing a little bit of before. So we technically want to Scratch a lot first. Then it's going to be a Raucous Queen and use this to consume Scratch a lot. And in doing so, Weavis Incantation will create a, a second scratch lot here. But we don't consume this yet. Because this is the turn where we use Sienna. Yes, I know it's going to say we're overcommitting, except we're not really. So we double the deploy on a Baya, that means. So we go here. And get two extra scratch lots there. Oh, what? Uh, three extra scratch lots? What? Um, did I did I miscount my scratch lots? Anyway, um, now we do this. Oh, one of those was from uh, Adrian. That's why. Let's make a little bit more room here, because we would. Let's not use this ability, because otherwise we're gonna run out of space. Let's do this. Get another scratch a lot, and so we still need to take one more turn so we can use these order abilities. Otherwise, since we spawned these in, they do not start with the resilience. We need to use the order to replay them. Then they have resilience. And we could play this scratch all this well, or better yet, would probably be just purify whatever units they have here. And uh, they don't have that much, to be honest. Like Brothens is technically an engine. I guess Vigo is as well. So really either of them. So purify to reduce their effectiveness in round two. And we just load up on the boosts and the carryover on all of our scratch lots because they will get the resilience and they will continue to get the resilience even in the next round. So there we go. It's one, two, three, four, five, six scratch lots and a seventh here in hand that we can wait to play in the next round. Okay, and we still ideal card here would probably be Siegfried for the purification. Obviously, we're getting some here, but. There he is, beautiful. Okay, because that way we can get rid of all of their resilience and uh, and just replay the scratch lots to maintain ours. Granted, this is what we really wanted at the end of round one because they don't have much in the way of resilience here. But uh, let's see, Nagelfair, out of curiosity, at this point uh, is Kashi and guaranteed Kashi alone, which is the ideal play for a short round in which we just trigger it nonstop with the thrives from the big boosts on the sort of scratch lots. So I think what we'll do here is Siegfried just doesn't really have much of a place right now. We'll go scratch a lot here. And you will start with the resilience because we played you from hand. These guys do not have resilience unless we do this and replay technically speaking. We should play the smaller boosted ones first, which means you to try to trigger as many thrives here as we can. But not sure it's going to make a huge difference. You guys are both fours. Probably should have split them across rows a little bit more than we did. And or not put them all right next to each other in case they have some resilience they're about to throw at us. But that's the thing about Scratch a lot. They purify them, get rid of the resilience. We can replay them on our next turn. And once again, we maintain the carryover. So we'll probably do a bit of a tempo pass. Ideally, we would pass on our next turn. That would ideally be the plan. And we just force them to play a bunch of cards to try to catch up to us. Okay, it's Triss Butterflies that they make here. And that'll, of course, help them fine-tune their hand further. But it's, at least short-term, not worth much. Leader ability as well, and they might seek free to face, see him, thinking that that's going to help them, except it won't. No, they go Thrive. 
Okay, and I think we'll play one more turn here. We'll go one more turn, and in doing so, we'll actually go Fuka. So we're just going to point slam like crazy here. We're going to go Fuka in uh, take your pick, which row. And we'll use leader ability as well, because we get the nine points in this round, and we get, of course, the nine points carrying over to the next round as well. And then we just spam the scratch lots, and once again, we should technically start with the small ones first, which means, for the most part, that's melee row. And now we will get some uh, Fuka boosts as well, eventually. So that is where this will start to come into play. It's like these ones are all the same amount of points, but I think our range scratch lots are a little bit bigger, and we probably should try to spread them out more, which mostly was relevant to the melee road. I once again forgot to do that, so hopefully they aren't about to use like a treason or something like that. But we have a hundred point lead. And sure, they have five more cards than us. We're going to pass on our next turn, unless they purify, in which case we'll we'll play one more turn, discard a card if we have to, just so we maintain the, the carryover on the scratch a lot. Sahil. That's interesting. Um, really had no indication previously that they were a Sahil deck. They, I suppose it does explain why they had so many one-power cards they're trying to put on our side of the board. But I think... They need a lot of time to set up Sahil. And sure, you'll be able to get rid of your one power units that you're putting in here, but not really much else. And I think they're flooding our side of the board. We, technically speaking, even if we can't play any more of our units here, we can still get tons of value from the scratch a lot boost. But I think, nonetheless, we will still pass on this, this turn. The big risk is if they do purify immediately, then obviously we will lose the scratch lots going into round three but they still have to catch up to us points-wise. So even if they do that, they, they have a lot of work still to do. So it's a big tempo pass. They have four cards to score 90 points. Terra Nova. All right, we're going to see if they can do it. To create a scratch a lot, I mean, sure. One scratch a lot versus six. Ours have been set up already. Yours has not. So Hill, you have some two power cards you can go after, yes, but it's going to take a while for those to be of any significance. Maybe they're going to... Yeah, you know, our three-point scratch lot, they can probably destroy. They will be able to destroy with Sahil on their next turn. But is it going to be enough? They uh, they do have some Thrive as well, so they will trigger some Thrives from that uh, scratch lot. So, you know, it's not out of the question... But at this point, what is still in question is how many cards is it going to take them? Because if they do catch us, are we going to have a huge card advantage and still some carryover from our scratch a lot? More carryover than they're getting from theirs? Let's see. So now they technically need to catch us on this turn to be on even cards going into round three. Even then, I think we still have better carryover. So this is sort of the key breaking points. They should have enough Sahil damage to remove a scratch a lot. So that's unfortunate, but of course we have five more where that one came from. So I think we'll still be fine, and Imperial Diplomacy is just not going to give you the kind of points you need to catch us here. And do you have a good target to destroy? I guess Triss. It's not a terrible option. It does trigger some Thrives. There's the scratch a lot, which will give them more Thrive triggers here, but it's not enough. They have to go cards down going into round three. And Sahil, at this point, just needs to pick off one power units, which is not worth very much to them. Do we even have any bronze units in our graveyard? The ones they destroyed, yeah. Well, it might set up more Sahil destruction here. It probably does. Yeah, on one of our scratch lots. So that's not insignificant, limiting our carryover. But once again, that's one thing. They still need to catch us in this round because we won round one. So it's Sahil again. Remove a scratch lot. True. Sure. Getting closer. They only have one card left, and getting getting Thrive is big. I'm thinking they will be able to catch us on their last play. At this point, they might be triggering our Thrive with their Scratch Lot as well. But it's just pure Sahil. That is enough. It is enough. But we have three card advantage and, uh, what? Three Scratch Lot advantage? Two Scratch Lot advantage? 
Okay, so this is where we're going to use Nagglefair. And in doing so, get a Kashe. Ideally in a row by itself with a lot of room in it. Like, we'll move these scratch lots over to this row. And just flood this row with non-stop Andrega Larvae. And we honestly don't even care if we don't have room for other cards to get in. We'd probably like to get Fuka in there because that's worth two uh, points every time we trigger that Thrive. But, uh, like, if we just have to discard Peller and Siegfried, fine. It's worth it. I mean, there is Kashe. So, that works too. Mantrap, technically, can clear out some space for us or trigger some more of the, uh, uh, or uh, rather give more Thrive to us. Okay, so they do continue to flood us with Spies, which is annoying. This will get boosted from their Scratch Lot, but I'm not too concerned about that. I think we still go, if we go Kashe first, we might quite literally flood our, our range row immediately. It might prevent them from playing anything. They had to play their last Sahil, right? So they, they don't have Sahil in their hand anymore. For what it's worth. So, do we go Fuka before we go Kashe? We might. We might do that. And if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we have a full row. If we move the scratch lots into the melee row, so yeah, we should probably still play you in this row. To do this, the thing is, we're also boosting their thrive when we do this because they have a scratch a lot. So somewhat of a mixed bag when your opponent has a scratch a lot as well, but we're obviously gonna end up with a lot more Thrive in the future here. Imperial Diplomacy. Well, I mean, that's, that's exactly what they're looking for here. That's a big deal. More Thrive. As we were saying, we're triggering their Thrive as well, just as they are for us. So whoever has more Thrive is benefiting more from all these scratch a lot uh, order abilities, but this is where Kashe comes in. We are going to completely fill this row. We are going to completely fill this row. Keep the scratch lots in the melee row so that we have plenty of room to spawn in more Indriga larvae. And eventually, yes, we will run out of space, but even then, we can still continue to play the scratch lots. And even if we don't spawn in more Indriga larvae, we're still going to trigger the thrives, so that's fine. We can also get two more in. Directly from our hand like this as well. And this is their last play, mind you. And it is not enough that even spawns in and bring a larva on our side. They'll forfeit and we'll take the win. So going against Skellige here. And they'll go first. And we start with Scratch Lot in hand. That's great. We also start with Weavis, although we'd like to combine her with an Arrakis Queen. So, especially if we have a Vaya in hand as well. We have Siegfried, which means we have all the purification we'll ever need, so we definitely don't need you. And we have a whole lot of Thrive as well, so this is probably overkill as well. Siana, I mean, mostly looking to combine that with Karinthir, and we don't have him. So this be an odd round one. It's so their raids deck. They're focusing on damage. So, on one hand, we could play Scratch a lot, even in round one, and get the uh, boost happening early and get the resilience and have you carrying over into round two and even from round two into round three, because we'll keep on replaying you. The problem is the damage from their raids is going to make you vulnerable. So I think what we do is we start with just normal Thrive, and those cards are, it, certainly at least some of them are going to get destroyed by raids, but we begin with two of them. They're going to target the one that has the resilience, presumably. This one does not have resilience because we spawned it rather than played it. But we could, of course, proceed to just purify everything that they play in round one. Which means that, well, their round one, even if they play much bigger cards than us, won't be that strong. And I love their going leader ability round one because that way we can purify an 11 point patricide. Might mean they're about to play Renfrey, though. 
No, it's Gerg. Sail. Almost certainly. With all these one power units, they're trying to set up immediately. It's pretty clear that's what they're going for. Um, as I was saying, last turn of this round will probably be Siegfried. Remove all the resilience on their units, and Siegfried will still have resilience, so they'll need to play one more card if they want to catch us. They'll still kind of carry over from the er, carryover of sorts from the extra damage they've built up on their raid cards, and if they start playing Sahil, then that as well. But it means we definitely don't want to play anything big here because we are anticipating that we will proceed to, uh, well, purify it. So in which case, I think we might go Curse Damsel. I think that's probably our most disposable of cards. It does trigger our Thrives. Yep, there it is. All right, that's... Oh, and with Horsehair for more damage. This is not a great matchup for us here. I'm surprised they went that route and didn't get the easy death blow on a Siren. But also, damaging Thrive is generally not a great thing to do because it just makes it easier easier for us to reboost them. So, in that way, the damage is not that much of an issue. The issue is that if they use something like Sahil on Scratch a lot, then they definitely have the means to get rid of him. Or at least they will. So... I also am deliberately waiting to play him until we get additional setup to create additional copies of him. So for that reason, I think we will stand by our previous plan of Siegfried Purification Bombing right now and ending round one as early as possible. So this will force them to play, probably, force them to play more cards. I mean, they were probably intending to play more in round one anyway, but this is basically damage control because now it means they won't get 11 points of carryover, 8 points of carryover, 4 points of carryover, 4 points of carryover. We even removed the infusion they did. So if they want to keep on playing in round 1, they'll win round 1, yes, but it's not like they're going to get an automatic round 2 win as well, which is something that you might normally see in this event. And I also hate Sahil. I hate how much setup they have to make for easy Sahil death blow triggers. Which is another reason why I'd like to end this round before they just prey on all of our little sirens and also that intrigue larva. So let's cut them off quickly here. Because I don't think they saw this one coming. They technically can continue to play. And they'll get resilience on those cards, and that's what they're going to go for here, it seems, and just try to get as much setup on Sahil as they possibly can, or at least do enough to purify Siegfried. So they'll have four points of carryover. We won't have any, but we will be on maximum cards, and they'll be on seven. Okay, they're continuing to load up on Sahil. So yes, it's carryover of sorts, because they'll have stronger Sahils for future rounds, They'll have the resilience still, but we will have huge card advantage, which means they won't be able to answer many of our plays here. So that might be a good setup for us, actually. Okay, so this is what we were waiting for. Something like Triss Butterflies to make sure that we can get our Arrakis Queen in our hand to set up Weavis Incantation and Abaya to create even more scratch lots. And because we have way more cards to play than them in round two, that means that even if they try to push for the 2-0, which I think they will... They won't be able to uh, answer the last several cards that we play, so we might delay this a little bit. But uh, we don't have the purification we had previously, because we've already played Siegfried, so Spring Equinox is perhaps not a terrible thing. Some Thrive left. Potentially more golds with Nagle Fair. I'm not sure we have enough Thrive for the Man Trap to make much sense. Or granted, we could have used it to create a couple of Thrive units, so maybe that was the direction we should have taken. I was thinking of it primarily as a consumer, but it can do both those things. So yeah, now they're just trying to preemptively set up damage to destroy anything that we play. And... But first, we're going to go Triss. Probably going to be able to destroy her with Sahil, but that could be said of almost anything that we play. So let's use Triss to get... Put someone back, and I think that will be... Possibly this... Damsel. Yeah, it's definitely our weakest card here. Replace that with Arrakis Queen. And then with 
Nagglefair. We may be able to get either Karen Thier or Ander Ran, or maybe even Kashi, all of which would give us some additional cards to build around, or either set up additional scratch lots, or in the case of Kashi, give us just a, a different way to generate points. Okay. Raid from their deck. It's Blood Eagle. It has four damage now, which is enough to get the death blow. And another Rockfar Hunter means more damage. And in fact, with all those orders, they are just waiting to use. Combine that with the Sahil damage they can get as well. And they have lots of setup. Now, Sahil, of course, does require initiative to get powered up. So it's not perfect in that way. But this is actually very similar to a deck that we used previously. So, I mean, we'd like to go now fair and see if we can set up more... Scratch lot stuff, because the earlier we do this, the stronger the scratch lots will be. On the other hand, because we have such significant card advantage here, I think we will deliberately play other things early in the round and just try to force them into using most of their removal. Obviously, they're gonna have their pure damage check. They're gonna have a ridiculous amount of removal. It's mostly just wait until they have basically zero cards remaining, or until they pass, and then. We start pulling off the scratch a lot combo. Question is, is that going to be enough points for us? And I don't think they're going to have many points on their side. They're mostly built around. What's the hill back in your deck? That's weird. And by definition means that you did not get the initiative there. So that was really odd. Yeah, that's weird. But uh, wait until they have one or zero cards left and then start doing the scratch a lot stuff and hope that at that point that uh they that the scratch loss will be worth enough points to still catch them and we have leader ability which is a bit of a point slam as well um because if most of their their point potential is from damage and we just don't give them a lot of things to damage then you know they, they can't really get much value out of that so in that case we're looking at Fuka. we're looking at Possibly an early spring equinox. I think it has to be Fuka here. So these are all... I, I would say removal bait. To a certain extent, yes. But to a greater extent, it's just... We're trying to get them to play all of their cards. <laughs> okay. And they have just enough damage there. Okay, sure. So, I think what we're looking for on this turn is we go probably, it's a bit early for a Spring Equinox, but probably Spring Equinox. And do we purify you guys? Or do we purify you guys? Well, two resilience units here, only one here. So, and this one's only two points. So, I think it's definitely this. Obviously, the longer we wait to do this, the better it is. But given how we're trying to play the Scratch a lot stuff as late as possible so that they have very little time and ability to answer that stuff. Yes, okay, this is what we wanted to see. This is what we wanted to see. Now we can go crazy. So, the question is Sienna. What do we do with Sienna? I think we play her. Oh, play her, and then next turn it's a Nagglefair. We activate Sienna. It's Nagglefair, and we just pray <laughs> that we happen to get... Uh, we'd be looking for Karen Thier. It'd be either Karen Thier or... Could be Royal Decree into any cards that... I think we have a decent... We don't have that many gold cards remaining in our deck here. So despite that being a bit of a risk, it's not that difficult to pull it off. So, well, we're about to find out if we can. So we go Nagglefair. There is Karen Thier. Perfect. Use him. And this is a way to get extra scratch a lots and make two of them. So we spawn them, which means initially they don't have the resilience, but that's going to change quickly here. So I think we'll just, we might even use every turn to, yes, because now we've, we've basically committed to setting up our full combo here. Might not play the original scratch a lot, but just about everything else is going to go down. So it's... It's Weavis. 
and it's play the scratch a lot. It resets their power, and they'll obviously get boosted. They get the resilience when we use this, which is why it's okay to spawn them in, and why I wasn't too concerned about the points was because this is going to add up quickly. And so now we go and we consume with a raucous queen. So let us... I mean, we probably, I actually don't know if we, I think if we use Scratch a lot and then consume, it will remember how many times we've used the boost. And obviously that means we're consuming a bigger unit for a Rockets Queen, so we might as well. So let's do this. And do this. And then consume with a Rockets Queen. That means we'll get this. Oh, okay, no, it doesn't remember how many boosts we did. Oh, well, I mean, it just meant a bigger Rockets Queen, so that's fine. Then we can go and, I mean, tech... No, we're going to consume you anyway, so yes, we should. We might as well use this. Yes, I know we're overcommitting, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to get resilience in all these guys. And we still have more to do here because if we consume you, we create a scratch lot. Ah, I did it in the wrong order. Silly mistake. We had obviously all the time in the world to set it up in, in the ideal fashion. We could have gotten a fifth scratch a lot. I'm really mad at myself for that. Silly mistake. Silly mistake. We obviously have to take a turn here. And we have to take this turn as well to get the resilience on these guys. So, yeah, mad at myself for that. Silly mistake. You are a Thrive unit. You will get boosted from the Thrive. Obviously, we have more points than we need here. But this is mostly just a guarantee that we get the resilience on the Scratch Lots. It should be enough, but we should have had five Scratch Lots here for sure. So I'm kicking myself for that. We could use Force of Nature here just because we're going to get the resilience on our leader ability. So technically we're getting the points in round two and round three. We don't need it, so we, I guess, we will wait. Because, yeah, it actually means we can trigger the Thrive in round three rather than in round two, which is preferable. All right, so now we're looking for some Thrive units to get boosted from the scratch lots. Granted, we've played many of our Thrive units in round one. The purification no longer matters much, so... Cursed Damsel is something. Mantrap can give us more Thrive, and might even put that on these two, or even Sienna. So that's not bad. Royal Decree would be into probably a Fuka, or even Kashe. Yeah, definitely Kashe. Don't have a ton of room, but we'll do that. Because uh, four Scratch Lots will very quickly make that work, so yes, let's go. Might even try getting a little bit... Okay. Should have kept the Cursed Damsel in hindsight, of course, but alas... So it's Royal Decree into Kashe. So this is our primary Thrive card. It's only one Thrive card, Lids. Oh, oh no, it's not. Oh no, it's not. So the reason why Sir Scratchlot is amazing in this event is because you can spawn them in and still, through the order ability, replay them and get the resilience. And the boost value, Scratchlot remembers what that is in between rounds. So uh, these are, in some cases, I mean, technically we should go smaller boost first technically we should do that because now we can make sure that we're triggering all these thrives and we will get a lot more thrive engines on the board and so they will forfeit we might have missed a scratch lot but we'll take the win all right so going up against monsters here and we'll go first okay so we do have sir scratch a lot that is certainly a nice thing to have we have weavis plus a Rockus Queen, that's also great. We can use Karen there to create additional copy of Sir Scratch Lot. We have Inoran as well, and we have Sienna. Oh man, we have basically all of our setup here. One thing we'd be missing would be a Baya, but we can get that with Royal Decree. Do we have anything else we're forgetting here? That is all of our Scratch Lot setup. That's awesome. Uh, then outside of that, yeah, we still have some tutors as well. Then, I mean, getting a little bit of Thrive would be nice. Maybe we could do slightly better than the Damsel. Okay, well, there's Sabaya. <laughs> and not to mention, we have Curse Scroll as well. So this is, without question, a perfect hand. Uh, really can't get any better than this. So order of operations-wise, what are we looking for? I think it is, it's probably, is it Sienna? And then using that to double Karen Theer? Probably, although before that, we should play Itaran. So yeah, I think it's Itaran first. Itaran first. Then probably Sienna to set up Carinthier. Then we'll go for the Weavis, um, Arrakis Queen, Abaya, 
all that stuff. And if this goes uninterrupted, the quantity of scratch lots we can create, I don't even know what the answer is. It is a ton. A crazy number. So we do, of course, have a couple of cards here that are going to hang around that we would very much like to stay alive for at least one more turn. They are Thrive, it seems. It is, well, not great at control, but they... Oh, well, 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 well. Bit of a mirror match. Different leader, Billy. But I recognize that card. So uh, this, this is going to get really interesting. This is going to get really interesting. So now we go and we see Anna to double the deployability of Karen Fear, which means we can create additional copies of Scratch a Lot on two separate occasions and one additional copy from Itaran as well. So that's three Scratch a Lots right here. This one has Doom, but when we replay it with its order ability, it'll lose the Doom, so that's fine. Ah, no, but don't destroy it. Ah, darn. Okay, they had a tiny bit of control. Tiny bit of control. That's one scratch a lot down, but don't you worry. Don't you worry. There are a lot more coming. There are a lot more coming. So now it is going to be the Arrakis Queen, Weavis, a bias set of this. Actually, uh, Weavis first. So we should do that now. It's gonna trigger some thrives, you know, we'll live with that, because eventually, I mean, like, we're actually, we're actually gonna set up their thrives a whole lot, for what it's worth. <laughs> Just, why this is gonna be really interesting, we're eventually gonna get thrive down here, but we're, of course, prioritizing the scratch a lots. So I am very curious to see how this plays out here. Cave Troll, so they're trying to protect their scratch a lot. It's okay, we'll leave your scratch a lot alone if you leave our scratch a lots alone, although, We've already messed with ours a little bit. So now it is... Uh, we should first boost the scratch lots, use their order abilities, then we go Arrakis Queen. Don't consume it yet, because we still want to use Abaya. So first, do this. More Thrive Triggers. <laughs> it's going to be such a weird match, but I I'm all for it. I am all for it. So, you consume one of these guys, you immediately trigger the Death Wish, and you get the extra copy from Itaran as well. We don't consume you yet, so we want to first use Abaya. And they're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> what have they done? And well, they're doing something similar. Doing something very similar. Okay. Okay. They don't have quite as much setup. No! <laughs> no! They were looking to do the same thing, but they didn't have as ideal of a setup, so they forfeited. Oh, that's such a missed opportunity. I guess we'll just have to leave the rest of that match to our imagination. So there's a look at a crazy monster scratch lot deck for the new Entrenched Seasonal Events. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.